In this example, I'd like to start us on a journey of looking at angles of theta that are not between 0 and 90. In this case, we're going to look at sine of 150 degrees and cos of 150 degrees. So we start much the same way as we've done previously. We measure an angle of 150 degrees and we draw on a radius of length 1. However, as we can't put this 150 degrees into a triangle, we're going to use the fact that angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees and mark on an angle of 30 degrees. And that means rather than working with 150 degrees, first of all, we're going to work with 30 degrees. Notice that we still have a right angled triangle. This time though, it's to the left of the origin. The base of that triangle is still cos 30. However, this time we're traveling in the negative x direction. It's important to take that into account. The height of the triangle is still given by sine 30. And so we can use the values of sine and cos 30 to help us find the values of sine 150 and cos 150. So keep in mind that cos 150 is the x coordinate of the point on our circle. And sine 150 is the y coordinate of the point on the circle. So the distance we've traveled in the x direction, as in the x coordinate, is still cos 30. But we've traveled in the negative x direction. So really, it's minus cos 30. And as we know that cos 30 is root 3 over 2, the value of minus cos 30 is negative root 3 over 2. The distance we've traveled in the y direction is sine 30. And since that is still in the positive direction, sine 150 is equal to sine of 30, which gives us a half. So the coordinates of the point on the circumference are minus root 3 over 2, 1 half. Before I give you a few examples to have a go at for yourself, I just want to point out one key detail that is useful to keep in mind. Notice the angle in this triangle here. Although it's not measured from the positive x direction, it is still measured from the x direction. So whenever you are working with one of these problems, because you can do this in any of the quadrants of the unit circle, make sure that the angle you're working with within your right angle triangle is measured from the x direction and not from the y direction. Now technically you can do it in the other direction and you're welcome to experiment, but it does make it far more likely in these initial stages that you would make a mistake by doing so. Okay, here's a similar problem for you to have a go at for yourself then. Pause the video, and then come back and check your solution against mine. Okay, welcome back. Here's my solution then. So we need to go 330 degrees around the circle. That gets us into the bottom right quadrant. We can mark the angle between the x direction and the radius as 30 degrees. And then in our right angle triangle, the distance we're traveling across is cos 30, and the distance we're traveling down is sine 30. So to calculate cos 330 and sine 330, we're going to use the values of cos 30 and sine 30, taking into account whether we're going in the positive or negative directions. Recall that cos 330 is the x coordinate, and sine 330 is the y coordinate. So we're traveling a distance of cos 30 in the positive i direction, which gives us a value of root 3 over 2. And we're traveling a distance of sine 30, but in the negative y direction. So that's essentially minus sine 30, which gives us negative a half. So the coordinates of our point on the circle are root 3 over 2 minus a half. Something that's worth noting from this example is that we went 330 degrees in the anti-clockwise direction, in the positive direction. We could instead have gone 30 degrees in the negative direction. And so here we worked out the value of cos 330. Can you see how that would actually be the same value as doing cos of negative 30? It's perfectly acceptable to measure angles in the negative direction. It just means that we're going clockwise instead of anti-clockwise. 